This is the number one option selling strategy for passive income weekly, and I've tested it over the past year with our traders and found an 87% win rate. Inside this video, I'm gonna teach you what it is, how to use it, and how to increase your weekly income. If you don't know me, I'm Matt with Market Moves. Just in the next week, I'm collecting $10,000 on covered calls with one single stock. I'm doing it. I'm one of the most transparent option sellers on the internet, and I've made over six figures on one single stock this year called it out on the youtube channel so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out my next big plays if you do want that private coaching if you do have an account size that's big enough be sure to apply with the link below we no longer offer a discord we are coaching a small amount of people on a one-on-one -on -one basis or a group setting so if you can apply if you do get in this is the opportunity to of a lifetime in the next two years because we might be going through a major recession. So you do want some guidance through that. So inside this video, I'm gonna go over weekly income strategy with options. We'll talk about the strategy, the game plan of when to use it, picking the options, managing the options, all that stuff. It's gonna be a great episode. So no surprises, this is the iron condor. So iron condors are great because they're directionally pinning the market, but they're offering you insane risk to reward. You know, great profit, great win rate, and this is an example on options strat of what it looks like. So this is the triple Qs, and here's what we call the put credit spread and the call credit spread. If you don't know much about iron condors, it's basically two credit spreads put together that equals the iron condor. So this is where you want the market to stay pinned between two prices. This price is at 423 and 466. If we go between those, we make the full profit of $116. If we go outside of those, we'll lose 384. So the, the risk to reward is always against you selling options, but at the same time, it's the most passive and most consistent strategy out there that can get that 80, 90, 95% win rates. So iron condors are extremely powerful. I personally don't use them. They're not something that mesh well with my personality, but a lot of people I know can create some good income with these and diversify their portfolios. So just an overview, Again, it's a bear call and a bull call for credit spreads put together. So bear call spread and then a bull put spread. What this means is that the bear call spread, let's say, is a short option at 465 and a long option at 470. So when you have those two, you're basically collecting the premium between those options. So the difference between the prices. The difference between the price is $65, but the risk is gonna be 500, and the chance of profit's 82. So this is a major difference I want you to understand is that the iron condor gives you double the profit. So instead of $65, we're getting 116, but it also gives you a lower chance of profit because it's harder to pin the market than to directionally decide where the market's going. You know, it's easier to buy one leg of a con or one leg of a credit spread or one side of the credit spread. It's easier to buy that and make money um, because the market typically is going in at one direction a week sometimes. It's harder to pin the market. But if you do weekly iron condors, um, you, you can just bank off the with the strategy we're going to teach you that the sideways moves and the directional moves, even with an iron condor. So we'll show you how to manage the iron condor in all markets today. But here's the other scenario, the bull call. This has an 88% chance of profit, and this is the other side of the iron condor. So as you can see, you're picking up a $53 credit, but you're risking $500. That would not be a trade you would ever take. It's a one to 10 risk to reward, meaning every losing trade is taking away 10 winners. So you would never take that on its own. That's why when you put the two spreads together, you're getting better premium and better risk to reward, cutting it in half. Instead of a one to 10, you're getting a one to four or one to three in some scenarios. And that chance of profit is sky high at 70%. So I wanna talk about the game plan, when to use it, how to use it, all that stuff. The first thing is that the ticker's most important, the time frame and checking RSI off the daily chart. Those steps are most important to understand how we're gonna trade this. 
So the last step is going to dictate how we set up the iron condor, but these first three steps are going to set you guys up for success. So the triple Qs, this is a balanced ETF of a lot of stocks in the tech sector, so there's more volatility in this ETF. But the beauty is the liquidity. Liquidity is so important with Aaron Condors because you're buying so many options and you're selling so many options. If I go back to this picture, one, two, three, four, every time you're adding a new option to the strategy, you're going to increase that spread in that bid ask. And that bid and ask is gonna eat away your profits, unfortunately. So you wanna only trade the tightest stocks out there and it doesn't get tighter than the triple Qs, which have like a 130 to 132 bid and ask for this 420 put. So this is extremely out of the money for this to have a very liquid option chain like that. It just shows you that this is the better path for you guys selling iron condors. So that's a $2 bid ask and off of a $130 option, it's like a 1% difference there. So the game plan, you know, is we have to use the triple Q because of that bid ask and that liquidity. But when we stack the iron condor, we get those four orders locked in, the bid ask gets wider, obviously. You know, you multiply $2 times four, this is a $10 bid and ask. So the problem is the iron condor has that major difference between buyers and sellers. And it's harder to get in, it's harder to get out, especially towards expiration when these become worthless. So that's the only downside of this. So this, let's say if you got in at like 116, 120, whatever, you're typically giving up half of the bid and ask for getting in and out. So you're like losing 10% getting in and out of the iron condors over, over time. So if you're really good, if you're really patient, it might be 5%, but over, overall, you're going to miss out on like that much premium every time you're executing this play. And it gets worse and worse and worse with different tickers. Like if we're talking about even ARC or even Tesla, those bid asks are so wide. If you're in the iron condor, you're going to be paying so much money. So let me show you how to set one up here on Robberhood. And we could show you how much you might be paying for like a Tesla iron condor, let's say one week out. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to sell the call and it could be at the 70% chance of profit. And then we're going to go $5 wide, $5 wide there. That's your call credit spread and 70% chance of profit. You know, that's where we sold the first call, like 70, I guess 73 you're going to do that for the put side now. You're going to go down to the 73 sell and then buy a $5 wide there. And then as you can see on this side, we have short iron condor, which means you put this in correctly. This is going to be a $260 credit. So that's going to be what you could possibly make next week. And then your max loss is $200. So a lot of volatility, beautiful. It's a one-to-one. -one. We wouldn't really take this play. We'd have to go to like a three to one or four to one, which we'll show you in a second. But the what I really want to show you is the bid ask. So for Tesla, we have a 265, 295 bid ask, and that's going to be a little bit over like 15%. So the index funds will get you 10. This is 15. It doesn't seem that bad, but it only gets worse with the other tickers you might use like Amazon or Apple. So it gets worse and worse and worse with liquidity. And that's going to be a just a drain on your account over time. The next thing is how do we pick the strike prices? You know, how do we gauge what to do with the iron condor? The first thing you want to look at is the weekly chart because that's going to give you the best trends, but it's also going to give you key levels to go off of because we're going to look at the weekly candle specifically and gauge the high and the low basically. The high and the low are going to dictate where we're going to put our strikes. And we don't want to be doing the, <laughs> we're going to shift it a lot based off daily RSI. So it's super important to also check the daily RSI because that's going to take a precedent over um, the candle. So 
70 and 30 are your key levels for RSI. If you're over 70, you're going to run a balanced condor. And if you're under 30, you're going to run a balanced condor. When you're between 70 and 30, that's where you have the opportunity to go unbalanced. So that, that is the only time we're going to go unbalanced is when that 70 or 30 happens between, between the 70 and 30. And if we apply those rules together with the candlestick, pay attention here because this is where we're going to decide the strike prices for the condor. If we have an inside candle, we're typically going to see another choppy week in the markets. So that's where we're running the balanced condor that's going to favor another sideways move. And we're just going to pin the markets for the week. Once we have an outside candle, this is where things become hairy because we're going to try to run an unbalanced condor, but we're not going to do that if daily RSI is over 30 or over 70 or under 30. You don't want to be unbalanced when you're extended because we're more likely to reverse or trade sideways. We want to be balanced if that last situation occurs. Unbalanced if we are basically outside candle and within that range of 70-30. If that doesn't make sense, it will in a second, so stay with me here. But the first thing you want to do is take this candle, analyze the range, the low, the high. Right now for the triple Qs, we are seeing 420 at the low, 450 at the high. This candle, uh, this would be an inside candle, honestly. <laughs> uh, the candle is, it was a gap down, but then it moved back inside the range at the close. So we would want to look at this candle and say, inside candle, we're going to aim for a balanced range iron condor. I'm going to go through each scenario though, because there's going to be multiple ways you might be setting this up in the future, but for the most part, um, Let's just say this is balanced, and then we'll go through the unbalanced opportunities and show you how to pick those. But in general, here's my rules for picking iron condors, and this is how I achieve that 87% win rate um, that we tracked inside with our students. But 70 to 80% chance of profit is important because you want to be winning more than losing. And if you're a one to three risk to reward or one to four, um, you don't want to give up too many winners. So if you're at an 80% chance of profit, some months, some crazy moves might take away like a whole month of profits, like one week could take away three. So over time, you're just trying to stack those wins, but you want to make sure the losers don't take away too much. And this means that we're going to shoot for that three to one or four to one risk to reward. So if we can do that, that's where with an 80% chance of profit, we wouldn't give up more than three or four winners in the past. So over time, this is going to help you. I'm going to be using, in this scenario, $5 wides credit spreads for puts and calls. You can use 10. You can use the SPX. You can use the SPY. I don't care. It's That's something you can adjust on your own on your with your liking for your account size. But this is for people with smaller accounts. So $5 wides are going to be $500 for your max collateral typically. 500 bucks. Not bad. And this is where it gets a little confusing, the balance and unbalanced differences. So $20 and this is again going to be shifting based off volatility. If volatility is high, you might be $30. If volatility is low, you might be at 10. What you really want to focus on is hey, can we get this to a 70-80% chance of profit? That's the first metric you're going to look at. And then this, this dollar metric is going to shift over volatility in the markets. So don't stick to this number forever. Um, volatility is going to change and you might be at 10 in the future or you might be at 30 in a high volatile market. But overall, you're going to take the close, the close of the candle. So that's where we closed at 450 this week. You're going to go 20 points higher and 20 points um, lower typically. So 20 points higher, 20 points lower. That's where we're going to stack that condor for the short strikes. And then unbalanced, there's two scenarios. Let's say you're bullish on the market. You think it's going to go higher. Unbalanced bullish is going to where you're going to go 30 points from the close instead of 20 because we're expecting the market to go higher. So we want to use that short strike and push it up so we don't get 
in the money and we don't get scared at the time of um, expiration. So a short call needs to be $30 over the close. On balance bear is short put needs to be $30 under the close. So let's say this was a bearish candle, which again, it's not. If it was going down and this was a bearish candle like it was last week, the the short put would be $30 under the close instead of 20. So you're pushing the condor just 10 points shifted. That's why it's unbalanced. It's going to be more premium to one side than the other. And that allows you to um, play with directional moves and still pin the market, which is a beautiful thing. Let me show you what that looks like step by step by step. Balanced iron condor is going to have the $20 difference on both sides. So if we're at 460, 446 on triple Qs, minus $20 is like 425, plus $20 is 465. Again, the dollar amount is not as important as the chance of profit. You're trying to just get the chance of profit over 70, and then the dollar amounts, depending on the market, they might be X, Y, Z, but that'll be adjusting all the time. So for, for this video, for this perspective, I'm just using these dollar amounts to show you the example of how it shifts when you're unbalanced. And that shift, let's call it just 10 points. It could be 10 points difference off of uh, like whatever your baseline is. So that, that's probably a better way to explain it. But on the chart, this is what it looks like. Here is the close of Friday here for, for triple Qs. 20 points over the close, boom. 20 points under the close, boom. You only make money when you're between those numbers minus the premiums. So the premium is 116. That means that's going to lower your break even to 423.80 and 466 is it's going to increase the short call. So your break evens get further apart, which is nice, than where your short call is. So that means this box gets a little bit wider and that's where the money's made though if we stay within this zone. So that's balanced. That's predicting a sideways move in the market. How? And I'll go through the candles and show you balanced, unbalanced, at the end of the video, but this will go over the unbalanced ones now. This is where we're going bullish now. We're expecting the market to go up next week. Instead of 20 points for the short call, we go to 30 from where it's at currently. So 447 goes 30 points higher, 475. This would drag respectively the put typically to wherever it makes a three to one, four to one. So create that call spread first and then move the put spread respectively to where that makes a three to one, four to one risk to reward and a 70% chance of profit or higher. On the chart, this is what it looks like. There's the close of the week. There's the, the short put. Here's the short call. This pushes the iron condor profitability box up higher. And this is projecting a upwards move in the market, but still we're trying to bank off the premiums and get that profit from a sideways move if it happens or a sideways and up. Lastly, unbalanced bearish. This is where the market is trending down. And I'll show you what that looks like from some more examples. But instead of going from the call side, we're going 30 points lower from the, the put side. So 449 <laughs> with the time of taping, it already changed $5. That would bring us to 420. And then we manage the call side just to give us that um, one to three, one to four risks to reward. I know this isn't one to four, but stay with me. As you can see, this pushes that short put down and the short call down. Instead of being in the middle of the candle or the bottom, when we push it down and go bearish, we're, we hit the low of the candle, but we're always going off the close here. So this is the close of the candle. We're going 30 points from the close. It makes way more sense when you have a bearish candle. So this is the one thing that's kind of throwing this off. But let me pull up here the chart and I can show you exactly how this relates to some of the past candles in the market and how you guys can look at these situations over time. So just going off the candles, 
I'm gonna go off every candle from here to here and show you what type of iron condor we would have put on. So first one, uh, let's go from here. This candle is your previous candle that you're gonna look at. We need to see if we are outside candle or inside candle from there. And so this candle here is inside that previous range. So we would do a balanced iron condor. So balanced iron condor off of this candle would mean, let's say 30 points up. So 30 points up would be 460. And then 20 points down would be 431 to 410. Again, this market probably lacked volatility. So you might be at, um, let's say 20 points up or even 15 points up. So again, each market's gonna have a different range, but you wanna make sure there's a, a different delta, a different push for when it's unbalanced or balanced. But this would be a balanced, sorry, this would be balanced here. So you'd be 20 points up, 20 points down like that. And you, you would have pinned that candle perfectly. And so you go on to the next candle. Here's the range. Are we outside the range? Yes, that's a push outside the range. So this candle is going to be unbalanced. So it's going to be favoring the upside. So there's going to be more um, dealt to the upside. So you go like 30 points up instead of 20. And same thing here, outside candle, unbalanced to the upside. So there's a, a higher short strike for the calls. Outside candle here, outside candle here. And then this is like, a, this is tough. This would be an inside candle, but um, kind of looks like it was closing under. I would call this an inside candle. So that, that would be balanced. This one would be your first balanced candle. We stay still inside the strikes, so we're fine. This is a breakout candle, so we favor the upside. Here's a breakout candle, we favor the upside. Here's a breakout candle. This is still over the range, it looks like. You could favor the upside. This is an inside candle. You favor consolidation. Um, and then this one broke up. So we might have gotten tested there. So out of the last 20 candles, only one of them would have failed us. Um, here's a inside candle. So we favor the range. And that one might have tested us too. But down here, this is where we start getting our downside condors. So you're going to favor the unbalanced downside one. So we're going to we're going to put more difference from our close to where the put strike is. You might go 30 points compared to um, the balance where you might use the 20 points difference. Hopefully this makes sense. Um, this candle here, you know, it, it's going to stay inside this previous range. So we're going to go balanced. And that's where, like I said earlier, you're going to have an equal difference between the, the short put and the short call. So this might be a range for um, the next weekly iron condor. And if you do this strategically, um, you can make really good money selling iron condors. And I'm going to show you just what that looks like. So if we go to that balance perspective, let's do something like that. This would be a 77% chance of profit. Let's move it up. And this is like a four to one risk to reward. So you're making $200, you're risking eight. And if you wanna increase this, let's say five and five, um, you're gonna make $1,000 by next week, you're risking 5,000. So this is better for small accounts because if you're putting up five grand, this is a 20% return pretty much. You know, you're not getting 20% anywhere else where you're looking in the markets. So this is super, super, super strategic. That's all I got. This is a, a sick strategy for weekly income. It's just the most passive one out there and it's involving option selling and it's good for small accounts. So hopefully you guys like this video. I'll link one to the right of me on selling puts, which is my specific strategy that I love to do. If you want to learn that, you can check that out.